So, fun news on the uh, homestead today, uh, other than getting chicks, you know, and the, today's their first day on the homestead, we got them yesterday, but um, only a few miles from us today, there is a confirmed grizzly bear running around, <laughs> um, probably about 20 minutes away from, no, not even that, probably about 15, uh, 15 minutes away from where we are right now, a grizzly bear was spotted and is running around. Uh, Fish and Game has put out a live barrel trap for it, trying to trap it, so hopefully we don't see him at all, uh, even a little bit, kind of, maybe we don't want him. So there you go, grizzly bear problems, um, possible problems on the homestead. Hey guys, welcome back to the North Country Farm. If you didn't know, you're watching North Country Off Grid on YouTube. This is our channel. We like to have a little bit of fun and do a little bit of homesteading. So if you're new to the channel, follow along, check us out. Today, you guys saw, yesterday we got some chicks. We got some chicks at the local uh, feed store. We wound up walking in there and heard the chicks cheeping and we thought, hey, it's late in the season for chicks. Normally everyone gets chicks in in the springtime, um, and then you got all spring, summer to raise them. The store had them in at the fall time, which is cool, um, because we didn't get any during the spring. So, we got some in the fall, so we wound up getting a few chicks. But, when we got home, we weren't exactly prepared for it, as you guys know. We're off grid, which means there's no heat lights to keep them warm. And unfortunately, um, the temperatures dropped last night. Um, pretty low. It was actually fairly chilly this morning. You needed just a little bit of a jacket this morning. It's like 80 degrees now, but I believe it got down to close to like 51. So, we couldn't keep the birds outside. What we wound up doing was moving them inside, making them a little uh, chick box, and then putting a heat lamp on it, and then running the heat lamp throughout the night. Now I know what you're saying. Chad, you guys are off grid. How did you run a heat lamp? Well, the use of batteries, guys. I had a couple of 12 volt batteries, a couple extra uh, 12 volt batteries laying around. And what I did was hook my inverter to them and then hooked up the heat lamp. And then every couple hours I would wake up, turn on the heat lamp for about 30 minutes, warm up the birds, make sure they stayed plenty warm. It stayed fairly warm in the cabin last night, but it wasn't up around 80 degrees, um, which is which is too hot to sleep, but the birds need to be at around 75, 80 degrees um, the first few days of their life. So we woke up throughout the night, continued to warm them up, um, but the battery died. So I came out to get my solar panel, which we have not used. We have not used this at all this year. Normally what we use this solar panel for, you can see it's just a little one. We actually got this one at Harbor Freight. It's their cheap little RV one. Um, and we have used this for about two years now, and it has done great for us. Uh, I don't normally ever endorse Harbor Freight tools uh, or anything that has to do with Harbor Freight because generally it's junk and it's cheap. Um, but the, this has paid itself off over and over again. We usually use this to charge a battery to charge um, cell phones. Just plug in the inverter, get a charge, good to go. But I came out to get it for the first time this year, and this is what happened. Over the winter, the wire had frozen off, and then it must have pulled apart, and we're missing a clip. Positive clip. So, we need to add some positivity to this thing. So that's what we're going to go through today, guys. We're going to hook a clip to this, and then get our battery charging. It's a little overcast today, but the sun is still coming down. It's very smoky today, but I think we can still get a charge. We wound up draining that battery from last night, so we need to charge one of these to keep the, um, to keep the chicks warm tonight. Now we were also able, we have, we have two of these little ones. This is just a little 12 volt battery. These are sealed lead acid batteries, non-spillable. These ones are great for having around the farm. The other one was just, um, um, an old truck battery that I have but these are great to have I've got two of these little ones in the generator that we have we can actually hook um, the leads up to this and while the generator is running it charges the battery so we can swap these two batteries out so this is what we're doing so what we've got is a case of these clips also from Harbor Freight 
Um, I do recommend grabbing stuff like this in bulk when you're homesteading. You don't like to go to town every day. When you live out in the country, you don't want to drive to town when you got little runs. So, uh, grab an assortment of these clips and just throw them up on a shelf. Uh, keep in mind where they're at to, to use when you need them. But we've got a package, so I went in and grabbed them. And we're going to use one of these big ones in here. So uh, if you guys are watching and wanting to learn, all we are going to use for tools today is a pair of pliers for crimping it and a trusty knife for opening our package and also stripping our wire. Uh, I do have wire strippers somewhere. I don't know where they're at. We're going to use a knife because it works too. So what we've got today, guys, check this out. This is my little buck knife. This is, this is the one that I chose to take out of the package that Buck Knife sent us. This thing is pretty cool. So it's got this little locking release right here. And then just a little touch of that, and it's an open assist. It's pretty cool. It's got a bit of a spring load to it. it. Doesn't take much. A toddler could use this. But that's my knife. And all we're gonna do is just open this dude up. without cutting ourselves. Here we go. There's what we want. So there's our power. I've got this thing disconnected. It's out here getting sun right now, uh, but I'm not hooked up. It should be, it shouldn't have any charge anyway, but we've got it unplugged. Safety first. Safety second, fun first. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just take my, I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm gonna shave, um, I'm gonna shave some bare wire out, just expose some wire so that we can crimp it into it. Now when we're doing this, we don't want to, we don't wanna cut the wire if we can. It's not gonna hurt it necessarily, but we're just trying not to cut it. So all we're doing is just doing a nice tight shave of the rubber and exposing a little bit of wire, and not too much wire either. You don't want any exposed wire hanging out because you never know what might come in contact with it. All right, so there we go. That's a good little chunk of wire. That's that's maybe a quarter inch. That's about all we'll need, I think. And we'll clean off this excess. Maybe, we'll get it. There we go. Okay, so we got our excess cleaned up. We are going to expose. i try and get this so you guys can see it. You can see that there's just a little slot in there and those will fold over and crimp our wire. We'll just start a little crimp, that way it gets going. That way we can kind of slide it in and then all we gotta do is tighten it up. So we're gonna stick the one end in there. We got plenty of wire, plenty of contact to the metal and we're gonna crimp it. Okay, so you can see one, one of those little tabs is completely folding over and pinching that in place. We're gonna pinch over the other one and then make a good seal. There we go. Guys, that's it. That's all it takes. Pretty dang simple. So we just made another connection, metal on metal, positive negative we got battery stuff happening so what we'll do now is just a little bit of battery acid on that but we don't care okay very important guys when you're hooking up your batteries in any case make sure your red goes to red your red should always be positive. Okay, so there we go, guys. We've made our connection. We've got our solar panel. We've got a little bit of sun radiating down on top of us. So this thing could actually probably be in a little bit better spot. I'll probably move it over there into an opening. Um, but we're charging. And generally, if we let this thing charge for five hours, whatever, um, it'll run for quite some time. So we're just going to have to see what it does with the... Uh, chicken or with the uh, the heat lamp tonight and we'll have to see how long it'll run hey guys just another tip for you as well whenever you're charging your batteries never put them down on concrete you should always have something underneath it uh, concrete will actually sit there and drain out your battery while you're charging it and that doesn't help so 
If you didn't know, now you know. Well, guys, that is it for me today. I appreciate you guys watching. If you found this useful, if you found it helpful, if you found it interesting, hit that thumbs up. It really helps out our channel, and it shows that someone's supporting our channel, which is great. So thank you guys, thanks for watching, thanks for being here. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, stick around, maybe learn something, comment, interact, have fun. We love hearing from you guys. I hope you like this video. This is our little charging unit and this is how we harness a little bit of sun power here on the North Country Farm.